In this worksheet, what we're looking at are ways to represent the forces acting on objects just with simple diagrams. So we've just got this dot here, which represents a car, and then we've got the different arrows acting on it. We've got the weight acting down, the normal contact force acting up. We've got the thrust uh, caused by the engine, and then we've got the drag, which is including the friction with the wheels and also air resistance. And if you've got something which is at rest or traveling at a constant velocity, that means there are going to be balanced forces acting on it, just like we have with the car up here. The weight is equal to the normal contact force, the thrust is equal to the drag, and that's why this is going at a constant velocity. And that means the resultant force, the overall resultant of all of these forces is equal to zero. But if you've got something which is speeding up, slowing down or changing direction, that's caused by a resultant force or a net force acting on the object. And sometimes we might have two forces acting uh, maybe in the same direction. Uh, a couple of ways we can do that, uh, we can maybe add the arrows end to end, um, or we could just draw them side by side. There's not just one convention. But the important thing to note is that the length of the arrow is proportional to the size. If you've got some, a force which is doubly the size, or double the size, you need to have double the length of arrow. And make sure that you use your ruler uh, to actually measure out your arrows and draw them as straight lines. Now this uh, free body diagram down here, um, again it's just showing a car moving from left to right, and here the force to the right is bigger than the force to the left. And that means there's going to be a resultant force to the right, and that means the car is accelerating to the right. Um, now we want to think about what are the forces actually on the car a second after braking. Well, the thrust force has decreased to zero because the car's not accelerating anymore. The driver will have taken their foot off the accelerator. And that means we still have the weight acting down and the normal contact force acting up like we had before. But now there's going to be a bigger force going to the left. Even though the car is still moving to the right at this time, the resultant force is to the left, and that means the car slows down so it decelerates. And this arrow here represents the drag um, due to the friction between the tyres, but also the braking force applied by the brakes. Now this one over here, uh, we've got a rocket uh, which has been launched into the air. Um, now initially, again, the, the exact size doesn't really matter of the arrows, but it's just to represent what's happening. But the important thing is that the thrust upwards is bigger than the weight. And that means there's going to be a resultant force up, and that means the rocket is still going to be accelerating. And there's a small force to the right due to the wind. Now, a small amount of time later, I've drawn the weight force down as slightly smaller than before, and that's because it's burning up fuel and ejecting fuel out the back to push it forward. So the weight arrow is smaller than it was before, but now there's also a drag arrow down, and that's because as it's moving through the air and it's still going in this direction, there's going to be the air resistance in the opposite direction. So the drag is going to be in the opposite direction to its motion. There might still be some thrust, uh, there might still be um, the rocket firing, pushing it forward, but now the size of the thrust is smaller than the combined size of the weight and the drag, and that means there's going to be a resultant force down, so it's decelerating. And now we've also got a bigger arrow to the right, because the force due to the wind is even bigger. Okay, um, now we've got something, uh, we've got the monkey just hanging from the tree. Again, we've got the weight force acting down, and we've maybe got the normal contact force. And that's provided by the branch that it's hanging from pushing up on the tail. So if you imagine there's a branch just going through the tail here, there's going to be the force acting upwards from the branch acting on the tail of that monkey. And what happens now is that um, how would the diagram differ if it was midway between leaping? So I'm just going to draw that again. So the weight is going to be the same size and it's going to be acting down because the weight of that monkey doesn't change when it's in the air. But now there's going to be no normal contact force. And also there's going to be a small amount of drag, for example, if the monkey was jumping to the right. So we've got the drag and the weight. Both of these are acting on the monkey once it's in the air because there's no force keeping it up. So that one there, uh, some free body diagrams, which are just ways that we can draw diagrams to show the forces acting on objects.